Ring IQ TV, proudly joined by the one and only Malik Scott. Malik, welcome to the UK once again. You've been in many of times. How you doing? How's it been treating you? Good, good, good. Um, got Joe Washington fighting Chisora. Um, I want the most happiest people that the show is able still to go on. Robert Hellenius came in last minute for uh, AJ. And um, let's get it going, man. When the news broke out, obviously it was meant to be Dylan White. When the news broke out that he is no longer fighting Anthony Joshua, what were the changes you guys had to make? Because obviously I heard that everyone's panicking, basically thinking, are they going to fight? Are they going to fight? When did you hear and was you panicking at any time? I wouldn't necessarily say we was panicking. We just wanted the show to go on. Um, me and Jill is always in the gym cooking and working on the craft and, you know, getting him better from the feet up. And um, it just, you know, these things happen in boxing. I've been in this game since I've been 12 years old. I've seen cancellations last minute. But the good thing that we all are blessed with, that AJ market is so big that, you know, somebody was going to get got. He had a smorgasbord of opponents that he could easily pick from. And, you know, Helene has got the call, and I'm happy Helene has showed up. Now may the best show on earth continue on. Were you guys contacted at any time uh, for Gerald Washington basically to take Dylan White's spot at any time of the, uh, the course of this week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, about 24 hours after it was done, obviously they had to get on it and get an opponent. We was one of the names that was mentioned, obviously, because we were on the card. Um, and uh, that's something else that we was prepared to do. But um, Team AJ, they, 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 did, uh, they, they decided to go with Hellenius. And um, that's a decision that they made. And so Hellenius showed up and the show was going to go on. So, you know, we all going to get a nice uh, glass of entertainment come Saturday night. And I'm looking forward to it. Your fighter, Gerald, fights Derek Chisora. Yeah. Uh, how's preparations been for Gerald? Uh, good. We've been preparing for not just Chisora's style for the last past year, but all styles. Um, um, we all know what Chisora brings to the table. He's been doing this for so long. And um, it's about Gerald staying calm and cool under the pressure that Chisora is going to bring and being smart and, um, and being physical and, um, and using his range and all his God-gifted ability. If he does that, um, he's going to be pretty good Saturday night, and it won't be a shock to me, but, you know, some people could say they'll be shocked. What kind of fight is this for Gerald? Hey, baby. How much, yeah. has, he, how much has he got left in the sport? Uh, good. I mean, it's a heavyweight division. If he weighed 140 pounds or 130 or 50 or something like that, I would be a little bit worried. But I've seen some of the most beautiful comebacks or the most beautiful um, turnarounds happen in this division. And um, I believe Gerald is going to... Uh, be a part of that list of beautiful comebacks to turn around Saturday night after he beat Chisora. Do you think it opens up a lot of doors for him, such as world title shots, if he does beat Chisora? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, because once uh, Chisora is a market. He's just not just a fighter. He has his own fans. He has a country behind him. So you beat Chisora, you're not just beating the physical monster that he is. You're also beating or you're gaining market from his market. So you do that, your stock go up in his game. And when your stock go up, the, your revenue on the financial ladder, you climb up it. You climb up and you get more success. You continue to win, you end up getting a title shot. You get a title shot, and then, you know, it all works from there. You have a unique way of training your fighters. Um, a lot of different ways of using the defense in boxing. Um, it reminds me of a few different martial arts. Have you studied martial arts, and is that what you implement in boxing? Yeah, well, I was when, before I started boxing, I went to Tiger Showman's karate school. I went to karate school for about, you could say, two years prior. Um, I, all, I always just wasn't into boxing. I'm, I'm into combat all the way around. A lot of the, the defense and a lot of the offense that I teach, it come from Wing Chun, it come from uh, Muay Thai, it comes from, and, and, you know, this noble art boxing, and I just put it all in the mix. And that's a part of me also get ready to cross over, in a sense, and do boxing and add boxing to a lot of, you could say, UFC guys or a lot of Muay Thai guys or a lot of Taekwondo guys. I want to teach them guys this noble art so they can add it to their striking game. And, you know, it just, it just brought my own horizons in a way, you can say. Well, that's, that was one of the, 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 the defences I picked up um, from Wing Chun, um, the Bong Sao, which is, you've kind of changed the style, but it's very effective in, in boxing. Um, just lifting the elbow up, you see Floyd Mayweather do it in his way, own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Um, you can see George Foreman doing it in his day. You can see Kenny Norton doing it. You can see the great Bob Foster using his left shoulder for defense. You can see the incredible Vitaly and Vladimir Klitschko doing it. Larry Holmes, all of these guys, they didn't just use head movement. They used their arms, they used their shoulders, they used their feet. And when I say their feet, they did half step back or so half step forward so they're not out of position to strike again. And that's what I teach. It's kind of like, you know, you could say the Emmanuel Stewart way. I teach from the feet up, and once I'm teaching from the feet up, I'm working on your balance. Once we get from there, I'm working on your defense. Balance and defense is the most important thing to me in boxing because punching is such the obvious. Balance and defense, it brings good positioning. If you're in a good position, you can deliver great punches. If you're not in a good position, I don't care what punches you try to throw, they're not going to be that effective. So that's my remedy for stuff like that. I want to talk about uh, another fight you train. Um, the former WBC champion, Deontay Wilder. Um, how's he been training? Um, and does he have that hunger when there's not a fight in place or whether where there's not a fight confirmed? How does he motivate himself to right. keep training? He stays sharp. He stays sharp. Um, and we continue to work on the basics and we continue to work on his balance as well. We continue to work on his defense, staying sharp, counter punches, adding more punch combinations. And when I say that, most people will say, well, he's a one-punch knockout artist. Why would you be worried about having him punching combinations? Because Deontay has an open mind. So just because you could do one thing well doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to do everything as good. So that's what we work on. We work on fighting going all directions, forward, backwards, left, right, side to side, laterally and everything. And, um, you know, we have a lot of fun with each other when we're training. Um, he's a sponge for knowledge. I'm on my way to being a great teacher. I'm going to be a Hall of Fame trainer one day if I continue to go on the path that I'm going and continue to give the, the knowledge back that was given to me. Um, Deontay is the most dynamic, hardest punch in the history of the sport. Uh, right now, obviously, you know, January is for AJ. And uh, we're going to see how he deal with this Hellenius thing. But we also saw what we just did to Hellenius. And we broke him down and in a very violent manner, the Deontay Wilder style. You know, we made him come right to us and he walked right into the bomb. And that was it. And that. So we're going to see, you know, how AJ handled him this Saturday. And um, from there, we'll see him in January if he's, if he's successful. If Deontay does fight AJ, um would you still have Deontay go into the fight as normal as, as normal as he does, like look for a knockout um, when, when it basically comes, he, he'll, he'll give it? Or would you tell him to be cautious against AJ? Um, I would just tell him to be calm. I wouldn't tell him to be relaxed. I would just tell him to be calm. Because um, AJ is dangerous. He's a big guy. He has something to prove. Heavy, former heavyweight champion of the world, gold medalist, everything that comes with his market, he's dangerous. Can he fight? Absolutely. My prediction is Deontay knocks him out, you know, three, four rounds. You know what I mean? But that doesn't take away, that's not discrediting him. That's just my prediction stylistically for that fight, and I just so happen to be training Deontay Wilder. So that's just what it is, man. But I could have my predictions. We could train extremely hard. We can get ready for him, they can get ready for us. But it all comes down to the night of the fight on who can implement the best game plan that they've been going day in and day out in the lab with. And I, I feel as though my guy, you know, is the best in the world when it comes to that Deontay Wilder. Just the last few questions, I've got a line behind me. Um, <clears throat> what are your thoughts on Fury versus Ngannou? Fury has a lot... I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm, you know... Anthony Joshua is fighting Hellenius. Gerald Washington is fighting Derek Chisora. Um, I'm happy for, for the entertainment aspect of that, but in my opinion, it holds the heavyweight division up. You know, I wish Fury would actually fight a Usyk. I wish Fury would fight an AJ. But I know business come in with that, and I'm not really good at talking about the business aspect of this sport. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, into, I'm into this. I'm into this craftsmanship right here. I'm not, you know what I mean? Will I watch that? I'm sure I'll look at, you know, the highlights, and that's not a compliment to it, because I don't even look at highlights. I look at whole boxing fights. So if I just want to look at highlights from a fight, that means I'm not really interested in it, and that's one I'm not really interested in. And the last one, um, once Fury, Wilder, AJ, Usyk are all done, um, do you think it will take a while for the heavyweight division to come back up again? Oh, well, who do we got coming up? Um, I, 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 Jared Anderson. Jared Anderson. He just had a good fight against Charles Martin. But besides him, do we have at least five Jared Andersons right now? I don't think so. So I think when these guys leave, I think the marginalized the time aspect of it, I'm going to say it's going to take four to five years to get somebody extremely legitimate because 
That's just my opinion. I, and I'm probably going a little hard on the time aspect, but I'm going to say two to three years for someone to really, you know, make a strong, strong stand and, you know, take this division over like the ones that came before them. Malik, all the best for Saturday night. Thank you for talking to Ring IQ TV once again. It's been a pleasure and uh, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, let's do it, brother. Peace.